in this session we are going to look at the techno economic aspects of evolution of humans so this session is not intended for someone who is doing history as the major rather this is for someone who is doing either business studies information technology or any other field like engineering why do we have to understand the history or the evolution of humans for three main reasons first of all we want to appreciate the important milestones in the history and also if we can understand the pattern of the history we are in a better position to understand the current situation and also predict the future so we want to build system for the future we want to build business for the future and that is why we are discussing the evolution we can understand the human civilization or in simple the human society using three key factors the cultural aspect which determines the values and ethics of that people and the economic aspect which determines the mechanism of exchange in product and services and in democratic world the politics bind the cultural and economic will of the people we can identify four main eras in human evolution the hunting period the agricultural era the industrial era and now we are in the information era and let's first look at the hunting era that was the time where the humans start deviating from other animals due to advancement of their intellectual capacity and during hunting era we had nomadic lifestyle and we start using some primitive tools but due to that limited capacity of intellectualism and due to that keep moving nature so we had limited social interactions at that time and next we are moving to the agricultural era that is where the people start more settled lifestyle and also people start claiming the land ownership due to the settled lifestyle there was more cultural and political development during the agricultural era and let's briefly look at some of the important human civilizations during the agricultural era and some noticeable civilizations include the sumerian civilization in ancient mesopotamia hindu valley civilization the civilization in ancient egypt the ancient chinese civilization and the ancient maya civilization each of these civilizations have contributed to the advancement of the human society for example the sumerian civilization started the first writing system whereas the hindu valley civilization contributed to the the town planning and the construction we all know the ancient egypt civilization for their superiority in construction and some knowledge in medicine and other areas the ancient chinese civilization contributed with the philosophers like confucius and also they were known for their the great chinese walls the ancient chinese civilization contributed to the the silk industry and we all know the great silk route which originated from china towards the south asian region middle east and also towards the europe and finally the maya civilization evolved in modern day mexico contributed to some sophisticated writing system the maya calendar and also some constructions the economy of the primitive society was very simple so therefore they managed to do their economic activities with the help of exchange of goods and services now we are moving to the modern history of humans so we are going to look at four main periods the ancient greece the ancient rome the enlightened period and the industrialization the ancient greece is considered as the cradle of the western civilization so it span around 700 bc to 323 bc it was initially formulated by the alexander the great the greek civilization is known for its philosophy and critical thinking the great philosophers like socrates aristotle and plato are among them and also they came up with the foundation for mathematics and science the famous mathematicians like euclid 
who is considered as the father of geometry and also Pythagoras are the famous mathematicians from Greece. And Archimedes is another noticeable scientist from ancient Greece. Ancient Greece contributed to the inception of democracy as well. Next we are moving to the ancient Rome. The Roman Empire was known for their strong military organization and organized government. So now we are moving to the enlightened period which occurred around 1685 AD to 1815 AD, predominantly in the Western European countries. That was the time where the science and technological aspects revived. The great scientists like Newton, Galileo Galilei, they all came into the picture. And also they start building some economic theories. The famous Adam Smith, who is considered as the father of economics, came up with some economic theories. And due to all those factors, the Western European countries dominated the world and they managed to colonize both North America and South America, the entire African region and also a good part of Asia and Australia. So at the end of the enlightened period, the humans step into the industrialization. That was around 1815 AD to 1900 AD. That was the time period where the concept like capitalism, factory, management and marketing came into the picture. Now let's briefly look at what was the driving force behind industrialization in the Europe. It all triggered during the enlightenment period due to the advancement of science and logical thinking. So then people start developing some machineries and engineering concepts. At the same time, they start building some economic theories. So which results in developing some machineries and formal use of money. Or we call it the capitalist idea. So the combination of machineries and the formal use of money or capitalism resulted in building factories or the mass production. And it combined with utility services for distribution and selling. And during this time period, people came up with some political theories to identify what are the best ways to do those productions. Now let's look at the philosophy behind some of those economic theories. The economic theories are inseparable from political theories. Because politics represents the economic and cultural will of the society. And during the industrialization period, there was a debate on what are the best ways of producing goods and services. And their focus was mainly on process and cons of the competition versus collaboration. A set of economists like Adam Smith emphasized the, the importance of the both competition and collaboration and they came up with the capitalist political ideology and there was another set of politicians or economists who hate competition so they were mainly focusing on collaboration only so they came up with the communist political ideology and at the end of the 19th century they managed to build two political and economic theories the free and open economic theory supported by capitalist political ideology and the close economic theory supported by the communist political ideology. So let's look at the process and cons of those two economic and political systems. Under free and open economy, anyone can set up new businesses with lot of ease. And when it comes to close economy, the businesses are directly under the government control. In free market economy, the customers have freedom to choose their product and services. Whereas in close economy, customers have to rely on the choices available from the government. Free and open economy promote dynamicity and competitiveness. Whereas the close economy promote a static and non-competitive nature. So in nutshell, the free market economy promotes the good combination of 
competition and collaboration whereas the closed economy is focusing on collaboration only now let's look at how these economic or political theories have spread across the globe the countries in green and yellow are more towards the free market economy whereas the countries in red are more towards closed economy you can clearly see that the countries like the united states canada good part of western europe the part of southeastern asian countries like korea japan and also countries like dubai qatar so they are part of the free and open economic model and when it comes to closed economy or the communist political ideology it all started in russia and eastern part of the europe so then it spread across asian and african countries as well the predominant communist countries include cuba north korea and some other countries in the asian and african region and when it comes to china they use an opportunistic approach of using both state capitalism and communism for their advantage and now let's move on to the evolution of the concept of business organizations and we discussed that in the capitalist political ideology or the free market economy it consider both competition and collaboration as good things and formulating a business organization or company help both competition and collaboration because when we have a business organization we are in a better position to build complex product and solutions and also we are in a better position to collaborate and it increase the productivity as well and when we increase the productivity and quality we are in a better position to get the competitive advantage in the free market economy now let's look at the key factors in economy of the industrialized society now we have a society with more complicated needs and in industrialized society the key facts include the government that supply the money the supplementary banks the business organizations and people and let's see how these things are interacting with each other in both free market to closed economy it is the government that can supply and control the money they are supplemented by banks which are under direct or indirect control of the government and individuals or business organizations can start producing product and services and they can exchange those product and services using the help of money and also businesses or people can collect as much money as possible in capitalistic system and they can start investing for those in existing businesses or new businesses now let's move on to the information era or the modern era it all started in 1950s when the electronic computer was invented another important milestone is the introduction of internet which started in 1969 but it became a global network in 1980s the introduction of smartphones made the information technology reach to the common people and some other key developments include the use of ai robotics cloud computing and so many other features and now let's look at some key trends in information era so one of the great result of information era was the globalization so that made the entire world close together due to the advancement of information technology and other technologies like transportation now people are doing more and more online by and they interact more and more with social media people are using cryptocurrency they do remote working at the same time there are some other technologies like virtual interactions robotics artificial intelligence which are dominate in the information era and lot of emphasis on freedom of the people and now let's look at what are the key pillars in economy in information era one of the noticeable missing link is the government the reason is 
now we are moving towards the cryptocurrency the currency without government or the people's currency that is a significant milestone in the evolution of the humans so we are breaking another link with the governments or the rulers now people can set up businesses individually or as a business organizations and they can sell their product and services with the help of cryptocurrencies the world is moving towards more and more free market economy and people are more conscious about their freedom and when you are doing your business studies or information technology or any other engineering aspects you have to think about the modern society and the future and we have to build businesses build information system for the future and if you feel like this session is interesting and useful make sure you like it and if you want to get notifications when more and more sessions are uploaded make sure you subscribe to the channel as well thank you